Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we are talking about some of my favorite creatures, the vultures. These often despised and rarely appreciated birds are part of nature's cleanup crew and they play a crucial role in curbing the spread of dangerous diseases. They can take almost anything that nature throws at them, including Ebola, the plague and other bacteria, but there is one thing they cannot survive and that is man-made poisons. Vultures are fascinating creatures. They can smell things from kilometers away and they can fly despite being huge. And also their stomach acids are so brutal that they can literally eat anthrax for breakfast. They are the ultimate scavenger. Because of their sense of smell and how high up they can fly, they can detect carcasses before almost any other animal and get there before them. I have been lucky enough to witness this at one of our projects where we do supplementary feeding for vultures. After putting the carcass out into the fields, uh, one or two vultures will find it and will start uh, circling high up above. And then the other vultures in the area, they'll see them and uh, slowly join them. And within 20, 30 minutes, you start seeing more and more and more join up until there's 30, 40, 50, 60 of them. And after that, they all as a group uh, go down and uh, into the branches of the, the nearby trees. And when it seems to be safe to go for the carcass, they all go for it. And it is a gory spectacle. But the point is they're very efficient. They're very quick to detect it. They're the first ones there and they do a very thorough job cleaning the carcass. There are two ways by which vultures help prevent the spread of dangerous diseases by doing such a thorough cleanup job and by being such a dominant scavenger. Let's focus first on their cleanup function. Vultures are considered a keystone species, which means that they are an organism that defines an entire ecosystem. So that if they weren't there or if they were to disappear, the ecosystem would change dramatically or perhaps it would cease to exist altogether. This is because they are such effective scavengers that they cut the rate of transmission of infectious diseases in other wildlife populations. I like to view them as the doctor, the unsung medical hero of the animal world that uh, is very much like a virologist, uh, which I'm sure all of us can appreciate in 2021. The second way by which vultures fight the spread of dangerous diseases is by being such a dominant scavenger. This one you will see is more directly related to humans. By being such amazing scavenging machines, vultures are essentially able to outcompete other scavengers, which means that they will naturally control their populations. You see, because they are so good at detecting carcasses by their sense of smell and by flying up high, they're able to get there before the other animals, which means that those other scavengers simply have less food availability and thus their populations will be smaller. This is particularly relevant when those other scavenger populations can be dangerous to humans, such as feral dogs who transmit rabies. A clear example of this can be found in India, where in the 1990s, the use of diclofenac, a anti-inflammatory used by livestock breeders, led to the poisoning of any vultures that would feed on those carcasses. And due to the fact that vultures feed in large groups, a single carcass can poison hundreds of vultures. This led to a crash of vulture populations. Almost 97% of vultures were wiped out in just over a decade. And this meant that there were more carcasses available to other scavengers, so that in turn, their populations boomed. In India, feral dog populations increased from just about 7 million to almost 29 million in just one decade. For us, the issue is that feral dogs are responsible for almost all cases of rabies in humans which meant that when their population boomed, so did the amount of dog bites. They increased by almost 38.5 million during this period, which led to almost 50,000 deaths in just one decade. Besides the horrific loss of human life, the Indian government also had to spend almost $34 billion to help prevent the spread of rabies through sterilization and vaccination programs. And while there were other factors such as urbanization that led to the increase in these feral dog populations, we can say with a high degree of certainty that vultures played a role in this and helped control their populations and thus helped control the spread of rabies. And we can also say with a high degree of certainty that bringing back vultures is a great way to help balance a wild ecosystem, a great way to fight rabies, 
and ultimately a great way to save human lives. Of the 23 species of vulture that exist on this planet, three are endangered and nine are critically endangered. To help fight this, here at Bossy Earth, we have developed projects to support vulture populations in the Iberian Peninsula and in Namibia. In the Iberian Peninsula, we are tracking a population of griffin vultures using GPS to better understand their use of the landscape as well as their migratory and feeding behavior. Though they themselves are not endangered, studying this population helps us better understand the general conditions for vultures in the area, which means that we can more effectively take measures to protect endangered vultures such as the Egyptian vulture, which is classified as endangered, and the black vulture, which is classified as near threatened. Also, further down the line, this might help shape policy to inform how livestock carcasses should be handled. In Namibia, our efforts focus on three species of vultures, the cape and lappet-faced vultures, which are endangered, and the critically endangered white-backed vulture. There, we are building a restaurant of sorts to allow the birds to feed and clean themselves in a safe space and also to allow them to feed in their natural range once more. There's a long way to go in vulture conservation, but if you want to do your bits, please consider becoming a Mossy Earth member. We fund and implement all sorts of rewilding projects aimed at protecting endangered species, supporting fragile ecosystems, and generally bringing wilderness back to the landscape. Our projects include reforesting clear cuts high up in the mountains, supporting vulture populations in the desert, and even restoring kelp forests in the bottom of the ocean. For just 10 pounds, 12 euros, or 13 dollars, you will be helping us fund these projects, and we will take you along for the ride. Please consider sharing this video and leaving it a like, and remember that the 4th of September is International Vulture Awareness Day, so please share all these wonderful facts about vultures so that we can better help conserve and protect them. And if you stuck around for this long, here's a little bonus fact for you to share next time you're waiting in line for the coffee machine. You see, English language gets really creative when naming animal collectives, and vultures are no exception to this rule. A group of sitting vultures is referred to as a committee, as if they are discussing something. A group of flying vultures is referred to as a kettle. And a group of vultures that is rushing in together into a feeding frenzy on a carcass is referred to as the wake. Thank you very much for watching and for caring about vulture conservation. Until next time, cheers!